Hello and welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, I appreciate everyone that has asked questions in regards to this S10 project. I apologize for not getting answers back to you. So in an attempt to make it up to everyone, I figured I'd do a video on answering those questions. So this also contains things that I have ran into as I've worked on this project. One of the things that I have ran into is when I put the E3 plugs in, because I wanted to get something a little bit better than just a standard plug. Uh, they were also supposed to help with fuel efficiency and um, horsepower. Mind you, I did get two extra miles to the gallon with the E3s, but my number two plug kept loosening up on me. I'd be driving to work on the interstate in the mornings, and I'd get this horrible misfire going 70 miles an hour. And I had to try to limp it to the next exit so that way I could figure out what was going on. And come to find out, this plug would loosen up. So I switched back to the AC Delco plugs. I haven't had a problem since. Mind you, I had a 89 Camaro several years ago. And I would put the high, higher efficiency plugs in it, higher performance plugs and it hated those. So I had to go back to the AC Delco. Absolutely loved the AC Delco plugs. And of course, it's been a while since I've owned a Chevy. So I kind of forgot about that until this started happening again. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I need to go back to AC Delco because, well, Chevy engines tend to love AC Delco plugs. So that resolved my issue of my number two plug loosening it up on me. In the process of trying to figure out what was going on, I also removed the MSD wires. Well, since my plug was the issue, not the wires, I'll be putting those back on when I do a few other things with the engine. I also had a question about the ECM, where the ECM is located. Mind you, this one I got out of the junkyard because uh, I wanted to have an extra ECM because I didn't know whether my ECM was causing my flood mode issues and my misfire issues and all of that. So I ended up pulling one just so I'd have it. There's a bracket here that holds it into place. You have a wiring harness that goes in here and also the wiring harness that goes in here. So this thing is located under the dash on the passenger side. Mind you, this is in a 93. I think I pulled it out of a 92. Um, to get to it, you had to take the bottom of the dash off and then you also, I also went through and took out the glove box. So then that way I could also get to some of the, get my hand in there to get the wires off and the um, bracket off. So that's where that's located on a 93, 92 that I know of. I'm sure others are also located in that same area, but it's on right behind the glove box. So the flood issue Everyone asked, did my ignition control module fix it? Yes, it fixed it. Temporarily. And why do I say temporarily? Because on my old distributor, mind you, this is a junkyard distributor that I'm using as an example here. This plug, the clip on it broke off, which then allowed this to loosen up. And then so I was still getting the flood, misfire, hesitance off of it. So this is my original one here. And you can see here where the clip is broken off. It was hard to slide the harness on all the way. And it gave issue. So I went ahead and replaced that as I dropped my phone. And you guys are like, oh my god, what's going on? It's an earthquake. No, really, I'm a klutz this morning. I didn't get much sleep. But I wanted to make sure that I got this done. The other thing is these clips to hold the distributor cap on are a pain in the tuchus. Because you have to push down with a screwdriver and turn it. And then it latches into these little stops here. Well, you can push it too far and then it goes past this. You can not push it enough and it goes halfway on. And then you have some other issues. So you have to make sure that you're cap is on securely. So because of this clip, I ended up replacing my whole distributor and that resolved my issues with the flood mode. 
So if, for those that are asking, I would definitely re start with ignition control module and then um, see if that resolves your issues. I went with, I believe, the AC Delco um, ignition control module. I wanted to go with like an Excel, but they didn't have them for this model of truck and this engine. Um, so my other issue that I currently am having, I know, uh, if you, if I panned out further, you would see that this is up on ramps and blocks, uh, fuel pump was going out. So I ended up having to drop the tank and of course I had eh, about three quarters of a tank of gas in there because I had just put gas in it because I'm like, oh, this thing is still run for a while and, uh, I can burn that off. Yeah, it always happens whenever you have three quarter or half a tank of gas. So to do that, I ended up just punching a hole in the side of the tank because I was going to replace the tank too, which is a good thing because the tank is very uh, thin in the corners on the back side. So um, yeah, and I now have a tank and an ascending unit, and I'm waiting for the gas lines mind you uh if you're trying to replace your gas lines and actually trying to do it without running rubber lines because i ordered braided lines so the 5 16 line for the return is kind of hard to find if you're doing that and you want to do the 6 an fittings with it the 3 8 is easy to find um or your other option is to bend your own lines and flare them. Uh, or to just run rubber lines. I'm thinking I should just run the rubber lines because I've been out without a truck for uh, a month or two now. Because of other things. Um, mind you, with this truck, since it's rusty and crusty, I did not pull the bed. Hence why it's up on ramps and blocks. When my neighbors asked me what's wrong with my truck, I said, well, I just put it up here so then that way you'd ask questions. I don't think they find that, found that too funny. Anyway, so I found that you have to remove the bracket that goes under the gas tank to remove it from the underside, which now I'm wishing I would have done the bed. But once again, this is rusty and crusty and I figured it'd be even more work than what it was to remove uh, the bracket. So that's my next project, and that would be my next video on, you know, what all did I have to remove, how did I remove it uh, to drop the tank from the underside. So, like I said, these are some of the questions that uh, you guys have asked. Like I said, the main one is this ignition control module that definitely solved a lot of my problems. Mind you, the truck is old, and I don't know how long it sat for, so... Uh, it had a myriad of other problems. Another project I'm going to do since I have the tank off and I'm waiting on my lines and that, I figured, what the heck, go ahead and replace my uh, throttle body gasket as well. So I'll be doing that. Uh, I may do a video on that as well. So once again, thank you all for your questions and for your viewing of my channel. Uh, I hope that some of this stuff helps some of you. Because I know, you know, I had to kind of fumble through it myself. Um, the 2.8 isn't quite as common as the 4.3. And if you're looking for fuel lines, everyone tells you the 4.3 lines won't work on this. Not for sure why, but, you know, so you can't get the preformed lines for them. So, anyway, uh, once again, thanks for watching. I hope, these, hope this helps someone out. Thanks.